that's it in a, or how it works for me, I should say, in a cold environment. In a hot environment, it's even easier. Cotton draws heat away from the body, particularly if it's wet. Like we say, you know, dipping in a stream and it's going to cool you down even more. Otherwise, just put it on like granny. Remember we're talking about the hot environment here. Tie it loosely and just tuck it away so it doesn't get pulled out when you're walking through the trees and stuff. So it doesn't get snagged. And there we go. Easy as. This is nice and loose. So as you're walking around, it's doing this. It's fanning you, cool air over you, getting rid of the hot air. You got a peak there for the sun. Yeah, it's a good item. Very good item. Nighttime. I recently went out on a camp overnight and I wanted to try this out at night because <coughs> get back in focus here. I wanted to try this out at night time because if it is good uh, in a cold environment, how does it work? I really wanted to test that. And it, it functioned quite well. Um, I slept in it and it did keep me warm. Now, our bodies give off moisture at night time. Some people sweat at night times quite badly. This may not be the best option for people who sweat. If this starts getting wet, you know, it'll hold the moist cotton, will ho hold the moisture there and it'll hold it against your skin and you'll start chilling. So, but uh, for me, I don't sweat a lot, even though the body gives off moisture, it wasn't damp at all in the morning and I was fine. And it served a, a really good purpose. It was a good break for the breeze, so my head could be out of the blanket a little bit and it wasn't uncomfortable. Had everything tucked in quite nicely. All had it all tucked in like that under my garment. That holds everything in place when I'm rolling around at night. And for mosquitoes, now that I tucked it in, I've got to try and pull it back out again. I just pull the top layer over my head. Just like that. Could put it further up the head like that. That's all it is. For mozzies at night, I just pull that over my face. And I'm moving around, so this is flipping around. It's keeping the mosquitoes away from me. And it's uh, fanning a little bit of air as I move around as well. It's quite good, so I just don't stick my, the place up with my breath. So it functions very well. So sleeping at night time, it functions very well. I'm very pleased with that, how it worked out. So traveling along, it's versatile as for as an item that can be used to carry other stuff. Helps with uh, heat regulation, helps with the cold regulation. Can be used around the campsite in a variety of different ways. And let's look at using it as tinder. There's a number of different ways of using your shamag for tinder. Let's just look at three of them. One of them is scraping the cotton fluff off down into a dry area and igniting that with a ferro rod. Another one is that I've used before on mine, I'll just show you the evidence, is cutting sections out of it and using it for tinder cloth, uh, for char cloth, sorry. So cutting off sections of your shamag and using it for char cloth. A third one, which I like to use, is these little knots that are on the end of the threads that I was talking about before. So all the way down our shamag, we have these small knots, which are the loose threads tied together so that the shamag doesn't unravel. And I found if you cut them off, you can use them as a tinder source for easier ignition, and the shamag still doesn't unravel. <coughs> Here's our little piece here, and there's our knot. We just want to cut the knot. As you can see, the ground's very wet, so we need something dry to do it on. And I carry a uh, tiny little bamboo cutting board like this, because I found I can um, use it as a backing for things like this, because if you try to cut through here like that, 
the ground just gives it's so soft and the leaves and all the deb and all the uh, loose foliage and that and you end up not cutting anything it just pushes further into the ground and so you need a, a good hard surface underneath you also pretty handy for uh, battening as well having a base it's just a little bamboo cutting board and there we go that's come off quite nicely and there we have all those loose bits so all these lovely loose pieces of cotton hopefully we're going to catch that spark for us catch that ember and ignite downside to this method of course is I've been wearing this all day so is it damp this is my foil lid my canteen cup and I'm just going to form it into a little dish so it'll direct the spark down towards the cotton and hold it in there nicely for us he says hopefully okay let's see what we got as you can see got some ridges on this ferro rod which are hopefully a file will get those out for me a little bit later let's see what we got into there. Come on, get it. Yep. Okay, see how we go. There we go. And we have ignition. not burning particularly well let's try again yeah get it all burning there she goes so the shamag does it fit into the budget bushcraft budget survival category for 20 bucks definitely but like all pieces of equipment we just have to know it's uh, what it's capable of and what its limitations are and don't forget that those limitations and capabilities can change along with how we're performing as well so thanks for tuning in, guys.